Um, greetings in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, good morning, everyone. This is Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute, Saturday School at the Institute. We post live every week at 11 a.m. I'm just speaking on a short subject dealing with some biblical topic of interest. If you have a question you would like to be answered or a topic you would like for us to include in the series, please reach out to us at the Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute Facebook page. We have been embarking on a series dealing with the doctrine of salvation. Um, the doctrine of salvation is mainly covered in the letters written by Paul to the Romans and to the Galatians, but can be seen throughout the New Testament writ. And we just want to break this down in a way that is beneficial to the average believer. So this week we will transition from faith um, to regeneration. Another word for regeneration is simply rebirth or to be born again. Um, but we will get into that more as we um, continue the discussion. So allow me to share. So regeneration, um, what is this all about? Um, we will try to describe this in a nutshell in a way that is plain for everyone um, who has interest. So these are the various aspects of the doctrine of salvation. This is just a theology um, that breaks down salvation into smaller concepts in order for us to understand um, everything that is tied into salvation. So you may ask the question, what is salvation? Well, salvation can mean many things. It is just a word. Um, so we have to provide some context to it. And in the case of New Testament theology, um, salvation has to do with being delivered, hence saved, um, from our sins and all of the consequences thereof. And that is provided um, through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and through us um, living a life um, that is in conformance to um, a repented, converted individual who believes on um, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so the topics in gray we've already discussed and we are moving on to regeneration. Um, but this is just a sample of what the doctrine of salvation entails. Um, but today, as I stated, we will deal with regeneration. So what is regeneration? Well, Webster defines it in a number of definitions um, to subject to spiritual regeneration. Another definition is to change radically and for the better. To generate or produce a new, especially um, to replace a body part by a new growth of tissue. Um, there are some organisms who are able to reproduce whole limbs. Um, and this is a definition that would um, fit that. Then to restore to original strength or properties. The biblical definition, um, one can be found in Easton's Bible Dictionary, is rebirth. This definition comes from the Greek um, palingenesia. Um, from pollen, which is translated as new, genesia as birth. In essence, uh, regeneration is another word for being born again. So there are various aspects of regeneration. Uh, regeneration applies to a number of things and affects a number of areas.
So within regeneration, we can say that regeneration is transformative. It transforms the individual. The mind is also regenerated through the operation of regeneration. Also, ultimately, um, the body will be regenerated through the resurrection. And those who are alive and remain during the time of the rapture, they will be changed also, as Paul said, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Then there's a cosmic aspect where the Lord will make all things new, the heavens and the earth. And everything therein will be made new. Which, by the way, is a huge promise coming out of the Old Testament prophets. Regeneration is discussed often by the prophets. And of course, spiritual. The spirit is renewed, as Paul said, day by day. So let's look at this closer. We can see that regeneration applies to the spirit and through the new birth, which we have through the water baptism and through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. There's a process of change that takes place in the believer um, by which they tra are transformed um, from a babe um, to a mature believer. The mind is changed um, to be like Christ and it changes every aspect of how we think about things. Um, and this is driven um, by a life dedicated to the Lord and through the teaching of the Holy Spirit. Eventually, we will be changed. We will pull off this tabernacle and put on another reserved for us in the heavens, as Peter said. And finally, cosmic. God will eventually destroy all the world and the universe, if you believe in such a thing. That is currently in existence and make all things new. So where is regeneration used in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. Um, this word is only used twice in the New Testament. Matthew 19 and 28 and Titus 3 and 5. Um, but the concept is applied often, used often in the New Testament. Some examples are shown. John 3, verse 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Romans 12 and 2. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Acts 3 and 19. This is Peter speaking. Uh, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And once again, Peter, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things he was referring to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let's look at uh, Matthew 19 and 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, and ye also shall sit upon 12 tribes, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. This is Christ speaking to his disciples. Titus 3, 5 through 7. Not of works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, 
that being justified by his grace, we should be heirs according to the hope of what eternal life. So there really is no everyday application for this. Um, regeneration in the sense of salvation is something that is unique um, to the things of God. And uh, we can only use something biblical to apply this. Um, so we chose to use Jesus' resurrection as one of the examples. Um, but as we stated earlier, there are manifold um, things that are involved in regeneration. Um, this is just one aspect. Um, so what would we say about Jesus' resurrection and that ties into regeneration in general? Well, um, first, the Holy Spirit was the agent of this regeneration. Um, Paul says in Romans 8, 11, uh, but if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Um, so yes, we will be raised um, by that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that being of the Holy Spirit or the spirit of God. Um, it is also corporeal, which means it's bodily as opposed to spiritual. Um, the disciples were able to speak to him, touch him and eat him, with him. Um, also, um, the woman on the road who encountered Jesus after his resurrection, um, she um, noticed she was speaking to a, a man. She wasn't, um, you know, amazed in any particular way, except that she wasn't able to initially identify him as Jesus. Um, so there was some difference about him, um, but not enough to where it would seem odd to her. All right. It was also heavenly, um, for he appeared in closed spaces. Um, one account says that he just appeared in the midst of the disciples with a, a shut door. And also, we can see this in the fact that he ascended to heaven in a cloud. Um, so there was a difference um, when he rose from the dead, but he still had a bodily resurrection. All right, and last, the resurrection was also inclusive. Um, Jesus was not the only one who rose when he rose from the dead. Uh, many of the saints rose with Christ, and many more will at the rapture. Um, this is recorded in Matthew 27, 52 through 53. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept rose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. And so this is the salvation concept of regeneration. It is a part of the doctrine of salvation. And I encourage further study into this concept, um, but I hope that you got something out of this. And certainly I am encouraged um, that we can look forward to the restitution of all things. As a matter of fact, this is the hope of the believer. Um, for um, Paul said, if our hope is in this life only, um, we are of all men most miserable. And he said in another text um, that if Christ be not raised, our faith is vain and we are yet dead in our sins. Um, the resurrection in particular is so important, uh, but not only the resurrection, but also everything involved in regeneration. Um, that means the transformation of the mind of the believer, um, the growth of the believer, um, also um, the change in mindset of the believer. Um, as we um, walk, as we live this Christian life, we have much to look forward to. Um, part of regeneration is taking place right now. Um, it will continue until we are raised. And then finally, when that day comes where Jesus uh, makes all things new. Um, you can find that at the end of Revelation. Um, we will be in a state of eternal glory. Um, so that is the hope of the believer. This is why regeneration is so important. Um, a change must happen. Um, as Jesus said, we must be born again. 
And I would invite anybody who is not um, to be born again today. So blessings to you all. This is Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute Saturday School. Um, you can catch us each Saturday at a Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute Facebook page. Um, if you would like us to cover a topic or answer a question, submit to Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute Facebook page or on our Twitter handle shown here at the bottom. Until next Saturday, um, continue to grow, continue to learn, um, continue to be built up, rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus through a dedicated devotion um, to the study and application of the word of God. God bless all.